So th this this terrible, tragic terrorist attack that took place today, you must see it for what it is. It is an extension of the war, okay? Today, people were not just being evacuated in a vacuum for no reason, out of the blue. They're being evacuated because the United States and NATO invaded Afghanistan. They occupied it for 20 years. They promised to fight terrorism. All they did was increase terrorism by any metric, not just in Afghanistan, but in the world. They inflicted terror themselves. This was not just a war on terror. It was a war of terror. Okay? Hundreds of thousands of Afghan civilians dead. Millions displaced. What kind of nation building is that? And they've destroyed the country to such a point that thousands of people are running away. So if you've done a noble thing and you have succeeded and you, you claim that nothing was in vain and you've helped a country, why are people trying to leave their country and everything they know? Why is that? Obviously something is wrong here, right? So... They, they did not succeed in their mission. And I want to make something clear. Even if they had, like, let's say that, you know, there was no more terrorism in the world. Lovely. But, you know, in, uh, invading another country, violating its sovereignty, occupying its people for 20 years. This is an act of terror. It's in, its, in itself. It's an act of imperialism. And, you know, when you occupy a people, that's not freedom. That's occupation. It's literally the opposite. It's the antithesis of freedom. You, you don't have any rights. You don't have any self-determination. How can you call that freedom? So... You know, th there was no, no pretext, no right for the U.S. to invade Afghanistan or the U.K. to invade Afghanistan. And same for Iraq and, and Libya and so on. So just because they say their, their pursuit was noble, and even if they had hypothetically succeeded in it, it does not make it okay. Because people's teams, they, they forget that these are human beings. They have their own fucking country. It's their land. You cannot just go and take over their land whenever you fucking feel like it. Okay? I cannot believe I have to, uh, to, to spell this out. This is a really basic fucking 101, you know, primal, uh, uh, fundamental concept. Nevertheless, they did not succeed in anything, nor in fighting terrorism, nor in nation building. And so, you know, this whole incident that would have happened today wouldn't have happened if they didn't invade Afghanistan. If they didn't start this war on terror. Invading Afghanistan was never about help, helping Afghanistan. Invading Afghanistan was about starting a war on terror. A war of terror, as I call it. Which is still ongoing. The AOMF of 2001 is still in place. It has been in place for, under four presidents. Biden claims that he won't pass on Afghanistan to another president, to a fifth president. But he has no problem passing on the AOMF of 2001 to another president. Which was used to invade Afghanistan. Right? Which was used to attack... Uh, 19 other countries. And again, even though this is perhaps legally justifiable under US law, which it's, you know, really stretching it, um, it's certainly not under international law, which is what comes first and foremost, obviously. Otherwise, why do we have international law? So just because something is legal in the US doesn't mean you have the right to go and do it to someone else. You're just because you, you, your Congress votes to go and bomb another country doesn't mean you can actually go and bomb another country, right? Because that's, that's illegal and immoral, unethical, wrong, unjust. And so, they're still, they're still occupying Syria right now. One, one third of Syria is under U.S. military control. 90% of Syria's oil is under U.S. control. Uh, Iraq is still under U.S. occupation. You know, the green zone where they have the U.S. embassy in, in, uh, in Baghdad is this, again, people say that it's the size of Vatican City. That's not a joke. It's actually the size of Vatican City. Like, li literally. Uh, that's how big it is. And, you know, it's not just that. They also have the Ain al-Assad base. And why are, they, why are they in Iraq? You remember they said, oh, the, the war is over, and then we're, they're leaving, and then all of a sudden they're back? What, why, why did they come back? Because they said that they have to, you know, it's part of Operation Inher Inherent Resolve, which is what? Defeating Daesh, defeating ISIS. And again, here we, here we go again with this bullshit. You created ISIS. ISIS did not fall out of the fucking sky. All of these people... The, the, the top brass, the leadership, were known to the Americans, and in fact, in American custody, right? So they've either recruited them as CIA assets, or, you know, turned them into CIA assets while they were imprisoned, or, <laughs> you know, tortured them so much that they, turned, they radicalized them. And in either case, I mean, look what you've done. And, of course, the, the more serious and underlying issue here is that they, they got rid of Saddam. You would have not had ISIS if you had not gotten rid of Saddam, Okay. ISIS is a direct result, is a direct consequence of getting rid of Saddam Hussein. Doesn't mean you have to like Saddam Hussein, but when you remove someone like that from power, you have all of these scum that come out of the woodwork. You have all of these terrorists, gangsters, 
um, extremists who try to fill in that vacuum. It, that's not a hypothesis. That's not a hypothetical. That's a fucking fact because it happened. And it's, it's, it's still there. Okay, I didn't make that up or imagine it. It happened. And many people predicted it, actually. And it came true. Even the U.S. predicted this, and they let it happen. Right? According to their internal memos. There's a good article in The Guardian about this in 2015. You can read that, and uh, it links to this. They knew. They knew that ISIS would, would come up. They, they even, you know, they didn't call it ISIS, but they called it an Islamic State. And, of course, the, uh, the underlying issue here being that they know it's by extremists, right? Who have a, a, uh, the same objective as them of getting rid of Assad. And uh, they knew where it would form in northern Syria. They knew that it would be a Salafi construct. And so they let it happen. They let this happen and they took advantage of the situation. You know, they're playing divide and conquer. And so this is very evil, to say the least. And um, what can I say? I mean, it's just, it's just barbaric. Uh, they've helped ISIS. They've helped Al-Qaeda. They've... You name it. And they, they've worked with them to destabilize these countries. So, the AUMF of 2001, I don't know what that's going to be used for next. We do know that Biden said he's going to use it against ISIS-K, <laughs> whoever that is, whatever that is, right? Every day they come up with new boogeymen. President Biden says he's told the Pentagon to develop plans to strike ISIS-K assets, leaderships, and facility. And you know what he said, right? He said that, uh, you know... He will take revenge on them. They will pay. Right? So Biden gave a speech. He gave a very sinister speech uh, afterwards. And uh, this is what he said. Oh, sorry. I moved on to the wrong window. <laughs> Here we go. These American service members who gave their lives. It's an overused word, but it's totally appropriate here. We're heroes. Heroes who have been engaged in a dangerous, selfless mission to save the lives of others. Jill and I, our hearts ache, like I'm sure all of you do as well, for all those Afghan families who lost loved ones, including small children, or have been wounded in this vicious attack. And we're outraged as well as heartbroken. To those who carried out this attack, as well as anyone who wishes America harm, know this, we will not forgive. We will not forget. We will hunt you down and make you pay. We will continue the evacuation. I've also ordered my commanders to develop operational plans to strike ISIS-K assets, leadership, and facilities. We will respond with force and precision at our time, at the place we choose, in the moment of our choosing. Here's what you need to know. These ISIS terrorists will not win. We will rescue the Americans in there. We will get our Afghan allies out. And our mission will go on. America will not be intimidated. And I have the utmost confidence in our brave service members who continue to execute this mission with courage and honor to save lives and get Americans, our partners, our Afghan allies out of Afghanistan. So there you have it. You have Joe Biden threatening to take on ISIS-K. And, and for, again, man, I, I don't know what that means because they said the same shit in Syria, right? Like in Iraq. Oh, we're, we're leaving Iraq. Oh, but we have to come back and deal with ISIS in a limited way. And now he's saying, oh, you know, we're leaving Afghanistan, but now we have to come back and deal with ISIS in a limited way. <laughs> what is that? What is that? We'll see. We'll see. I mean, it doesn't look, doesn't look promising, to say the least. Um, but my point is that Biden can do this. I mean, not legally speaking. I'm just telling you their justification for it in, in the U.S., with the AOMF of 2001, right? So, in the AOMF of 2001, it says that they can go after, the U.S. president can authorize military action um, against the people who did 9-11 and those who helped them. Yeah, but this has nothing to do with 9-11. ISIS-K did not exist <laughs> at the time of 9-11 and did not do 9-11. But this, do you see how they use this, this AUMF 
to do anything. They just use it for, you know, mental gymnastics, right? Next, next before you know, they'll put fucking weapons on the moon and say it's because of 9-11. I hope I'm not giving them ideas. So, <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't know what this means. Um, I, I think... I think I'm right. I think I'm justified. I think I'm I'm being quite rational to to say let's be cautious because I'm I'm giving you a concrete example where the U.S. said it's leaving Iraq, and it didn't leave Iraq. It came back under the pretext of fighting ISIS, and now we're seeing potentially the same thing, right? The same day, saying, "Oh, look, because of this, we have to go fight ISIS," and I, I don't we don't know what that means. Uh, they lied about it in Syria. They said we're going to fight ISIS with limited strikes. Turns out they have special forces in Syria. Now now they're stealing the fucking oil inside Syria. Right? There's no AUMF for that. They just used the 2001, I think, I don't know. It's just, they just do whatever they want. You see, this is the problem when you have, uh, you know, you're supposed to have checks and balances and you have an independent judiciary and executive and legislative. Yeah, but when everyone is fucking corrupt, that doesn't mean anything. The, the War Powers Resolution in 1973 is supposed to keep presidents in check, but you can't do that when Congress is filled with fucking warmongers who work for the weapons industry. You know why? Because they'll just bend the law. So <laughs> that voids the whole point. Anyway. Uh, Nineteen countries. Nineteen countries. Nineteen countries. They used the AO AOMF of 2001. Not just Afghanistan, not just the Taliban. They use it for anything they like, anywhere they like. Every president. Bush, Obama, Trump, Biden. And, you know, just recently, after Biden bombed Syria, like the piece of shit that he is, um, I believe it was the second time, not in February. Uh, you, you know, we, we, have to, we have to remember which time it was, because, you know, they do it so often. Uh, the second time. Uh, there are two senators. I think it was Tim Kaine and Young. I, yeah, I, I, I think it was them. Um, they... they Sponsored, you know, they're sponsoring a bipartisan uh, resolution to repeal the AUMF. Which AUMF? Pay attention. <laughs> 2002, which is for Iraq, to invade Iraq. And 1991, which was also to invade Iraq. Not the one of 2001. You, you know why. Because the 2001 AUMF is their cash cow. This is what they've used in 19 countries. Right? Those ones they don't need. So my point here is that even the most anti-war or who, who pretend to be anti-war and want to you know, contain the president's powers, they're fucking liars, man. They're such frauds. Even if you go and you look on Twitter, for example, AOC and Ilhan Omar, you know, Ilhan Omar, I'll give her credit. She's been the only one who actually criticized Biden after he bombed Syria. The others didn't even say shit. Not a word. Not a, like they're the head of their party, their president attacked another sovereign country. He dropped fucking bombs on another country. And they just, they don't give a shit to say anything. Incredible, right? Re you know, re real, <laughs> really progressive, whatever that means. But uh, Ilhan Omar said something. And unfortunately, those who did say something in the past, during Trump's times, about the AOMF, I reference AOC, who very obviously is aware of what the AOMF is and why presidents abuse it. She said it on Twitter, I showed it to you. You know, now she doesn't say anything. So when Trump, you know, bombed Syria, actually even half of them were still for it. They didn't actually do anything. They didn't impeach him for it. They're just, you know, it was just a slap on the wrist. And, and half of them encouraged them even. Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, they're like, oh, great, you bombed, you bombed Syria? Well done. <laughs> they're just such warmongers. They're so disgusting, you know. And this is why war is bipartisan. This is why both parties, Democrats, Republicans, they help each other. They, they, they don't care uh, that, you know, they, they violate the law. They misuse these things. And, and uh, again, e even if the AUMF was not being misused, just because the U.S. Congress votes to bomb another country doesn't mean that they can legally internationally. Yeah, keep that in mind. U.S. law is not international law, uh, even though they would like you to believe that. <laughs> so they, they're just the war party. It's, it's one war party, and you have, you have two wings in this war party. The corporate war party. That's what it is, man.